Hi. Hi. It's us chicks this week. Girl power. Girl power. Jen and the two Laura. <laughs> <laughs> it's a band. <laughs> it's Laura Squared again. Yay. <laughs> Jen and the two Lords. We do need to have a band. J2L. <laughs> <laughs> These are simple. <laughs> I guess. I look at my leg on it. All right. <laughs> I know. I'm like, I'm a dude. <laughs> All right. I always go first. You have to, a baby to go take care of. You want to go first? Sure. Hi. Um, I'm the shorter, taller Laura. I don't know. You know, it's the shorter, taller Laura. <laughs> you, we, we discussed last time. It's yeah. a shorter name. The name. Oh. My mom gypped me on a letter. Right. Yeah. I sealed my comics back, so bear with me for a moment while I take care of this. But notice how she's taking the tape and turning it so it can't possibly stick on her comic books. That's your Naive tip for the day. Superhero powers. <laughs> and I'm wearing a dinosaur shirt. Oh, I totally messed up. I got my time. Scarlet Spider shirt on. Yay! See. I'm wearing the awesome polo of Space Cadets. I was feeling Jurassic Parky. Mm -hmm. And one of my comics has a dinosaur in a street jacket, so <laughs> I'm really excited about that. You liked that. that. Was, I did like that. There was much that. laughing. There That's was. Good. That's great. All right, so my first one is Dr. Fate, number one, from DC, and I really liked it. Robert picked well for me. Um, there's this kid who's in, I guess, pre-med school, and um, basically he's chosen to be Dr. Fate um, by Bast, Bastet, the, the goddess, um, who takes the form of his cat. <laughs> and the city is flooding uh, when we start in Brooklyn, and uh, Anubis is running through the streets in a an emaciated doggy form. I was say, it looks like a drowned rat. Yeah, it actually, <laughs> I like the art style. It's really creepy, like I like. <laughs> but, but basically, he's charged with, the, the guy, <laughs> yeah, Khalid is charged with um, becoming Dr. Fate and helping to um, keep the balance, which is Ma'at, uh, in in a way that Earth can survive, because Anubis is trying to wipe it clean with the flood, so that you know order can be restored in a way that he wants it to be. So Bastet says, "No, please, I would like you know you to help and the Earth to survive." So it's kind of cool. It's got Egyptian mythology in Brooklyn, and <laughs> the art style is pretty cool. Very cute cat drawings, which I always love. Little black and white cat scribbles. I mean, how can you not love that? <laughs> <laughs> it reminds me of Dirk Strangely's work. It does. Yeah, absolutely. Dirk, call DC. <laughs> That's right. So yeah, it's really cool. It's the beginning of, of his story. He takes on the powers and um, he does some cool stuff. And it it leaves you wanting to know what's going on. I'm actually gonna buy this. And then my next is Black Canary number one from DC. And uh, this is Black Canary the band. And Dee Dee is the new lead singer for it. And since she joined, everywhere the band plays, there's lots of violence that breaks out and you know, people are attacked and she kicks butt and it's it's pretty cool. She's obviously martially trained and she's talking about her sensei. On a different path, and now she's here with the band, and she, they don't know who she is. And um, villains come and attack, and I don't want to say too much, but it's pretty neat. And the art is kind of—I can't figure out what it reminds me of. And I've seen image comics that look like it, but so mm. it sort of reminded me of a grittier gem. Yeah, <laughs> we did gem. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Robert's leaving. The esteemed. Comic no Robert with sightings tonight. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. Bye. It's getting home ahead of the flooding. Yeah. Uh, that Anubis, he's just trying to flood us out. Mm-hmm. Right. So Black Canary, yes. And then uh, Laura and I. Oh, that's right. Something. I have yes, <laughs> yes. Well, the the story goes Robert picked this for Laura, and I didn't know that, and it looked interesting to me, so I picked it, and then I wouldn't give it back. So we both read it. Yeah. So this is the fiction. It's a boom title. Um, it's about a group of kids who get sucked into a book, kind of like the never ending story, but um, things go wrong. 
Yeah, it's sort of, whenever the book opens and it has the sort of script uh, paneling, it sounds sort of kind of Lovecraftian. Okay, yeah. yeah. It's the, the, the words are sort of, they're not flowery, but they're kind of, you know, intended to be. Well, and it's Ancient like, creepy. yeah, he resigned <laughs> to his fate before he even noticed. It kind of narrates what's happening mm -hmm. as if you're reading a novel. Yeah. And, uh, but it's what's, what's happening to the characters as they're reading it and what's, how it's changing their environment. And it's, and they're, and they're sucked away. It's sort of like uh, lock and key as well, except it's a book and not a door. Yeah. yeah. And they don't, <laughs> they don't really have a choice to walk through the door. They just yeah. open well, the book not knowing what it yes, is. Because they don't know what the book is. Yeah, but it's cool. It, it it's it kind of is the, the present, and then it goes back and explains what really happened back 15 years ago when they were kids, and then it comes back to the present. And I'm trying to think of some other movie where oh we have to go back and save our friend, you know, kind of thing. But many. Many, yeah, I know. <laughs> I like oh, our friend just like the one guy disappeared, and they all yeah. wrote it under. I could tell there's therapy in here, and yeah, it was pretty interesting. I liked it. The artwork is, well, boom, boomish. I was thinking the same thing. The artwork was very boom. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's your typical, not that you can see it, but, you know, like this panel is how it kind of goes through everybody's day and it's all mundane and just pick it up. You'll we'll like it. <laughs> What else you got more there? Well, I do. I, I do have more here. So I also have DC's Doom. Doomed is a new character. Um, he is a high school or college kid who was a genius, and it's kind of like, well, it's DC, so it's not Peter Parker. But he's a kid who's an intern at Star Labs, and something happens, and he's turned into Doomed. Uh, it doesn't really explain a lot of what he does or what he's capable of. It's more it's just his origin story that starts out. And, and his name is actually doomed? Well, you know, they don't really say that. No, his name is Reeser. Okay. Like the kid's, the, the, the first name of the kid is Reeser. But he's stuck late one night cleaning the lab and, and something happens and he's exposed to something and he wakes up the next morning um, looking like this character up here and he has no idea what happened or why although surely it couldn't be that thing that I was scrubbing off the wall that yeah but it's this is the one with the dinosaur in a straight jacket uh, it's it's it was entertaining and it was interesting and it didn't feel like I know DC has been very serious DC is always very serious to me we're the good guys and we're good and we stand for truth and justice in the American way this didn't have that feel. It had I like real stories that deal with real people and real issues um, that make it seem like they're people I can relate to, and this does that. So I was very happy to see that. Um, Especially the, the dinosaur in this great well, it's, well, it's well, the dinosaur, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you know, it's he's a kid who just doesn't get the respect that he thinks that he that he deserves, and he's just so excited about this opportunity, and it turns out to be this people stomping on him and, and not treating him like he thinks, you know, like, oh, the world is a cold and angry place. And he just, yeah, you know, it's just what we all face when we get out of college. <laughs> we think we're all that, and you're not. <laughs> Sorry. On the other side of the spectrum, we have Prez. This is not relatable to life, uh, but it is a... <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's about a... So many of these books are. It's about... Right. Well, you know, it's just... Whatever. Um, this is about a teenage girl who accidentally gets uh, elected to president. Because we all know that can happen. Uh, but it kind of starts to explore the story of where she came from and what she's doing and how she got on the ballot, which she did not enter herself. Ooh. And it, it totally parodies political parties and big business and collaboration and I know that the fiction mentioned Illuminati but this actually has Illuminati meetings and instead of the faces it's the secret CEOs meeting as they call it but instead of faces it just has like neon pictures over everybody's faces so like the cigarette person is the the Marlboro Bear and Big Tobacco and, and um, somebody else you know, like the agriculture interest is a big pig smiling, and it's nice. 
it's pretty funny. There is a lot of entertain. This is not a serious book by any means, but it is entertaining nonetheless. Just for the sheer ridiculousness of it, I think DC is poking a lot of fun at the current political state and the current state of status. Like people can vote on Twitter now because there's so low interest in voting that. Oh. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just poking a lot of fun at debates and just news. Just like, wow. Yeah, that's yeah. How she I got mean, elected. that's how she got on the ballot. I'm sure it was some social media. Thing. Maybe <laughs> I don't know. And there's YouTube stars in here, and it's just yeah. It's, it's a very parody book, if you're into that thing. And the last one I have is Thor's. It's a battle world, because everything is battle world secret wars right now. Uh, I found this interesting. After reading a couple of the other secret wars titles, you know that Thor's are like the police force of the whole all of battle world. And they, they're allowed to travel in between different dimensions. Like, everybody's aware of the different dimensions, but you can't cross the borders. Well, the Thors can because they're the police force. And they actually talk about police academy training and uh, Thor training. And, but it's all Thors. And I'll be here three weeks since last Thor's day. And, you know, it's, <laughs> it's kind of, there's, you know, funny little things like that. Uh, but oh, right, it feels on the cover. Beta Ray oh, Bill is a major that. character in this nice. story. Beta Ray Bill and Leaf Thor. And there's Rune Thor and... Frog Thor. Oh, no. Thor. Frog. Thor. Frog. That's okay. his name. Throg is one of the the, um, the examiners. But it's kind of like a CSI Thor. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> CSI Doom World. Yeah. So there's there are these murders that are taking place, and everybody's called on deck, and we have to figure out who they're murdering and why, and it gets really interesting towards the end and affects the Thors. They don't know it yet, so it's really super cool, and I can't <laughs> tell you anymore because it's just amazing. But it's and Groot Thor is in here, and all he says is "I am Thor." So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's pretty. It's it. I I was the, the whole time I'm reading it, I'm like, okay, this sounds like a CSI novel, and then I get to the last two pages, and it was like, oh, it just got really cool. So, um, how many of the other uh, Secret Wars do you need to read to kind of um, place the storyline? I think that you can read this without having read the other Secret Wars. It kind of explains here in the beginning on all of them. It talks about the multiverse was destroyed. The heroes of verse 616 and 1610 were powerless to save it. Now all that remains is Battle World. And it, so it talks about the massive patchwork thing. Mm -hmm. It helps if you've read other titles because you can kind of relate to, they, they refer to Sheriff Strange, who is the mm -hmm. sheriff. And um, uh, Odin says a couple, like how Doom is God. and. It helps understand, but I don't think you really need to understand. Um, I will tell you to, to get the big shock on the last page. You do need to read another Marvel title that I can't tell you. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Because it'll ruin it. Now you have to read it'll it ruin that title <laughs> and, and the end of this one. Give um, us a hint. The main character, what color is he? The main character um, is a girl. Okay, well that gives us about five titles. And it's a Marvel character. Well, of course. And it might it just look for something familiar. Good! <laughs> That's all I can say. All good reviews. Alright, I'll start with my Battle World one since we're already talking about Battle World. Yay, Battle World. Mm, I'm actually something. really, I thought Battle World was kind of a the dimension or thing. I like how they're interplaying with the dimensions mm -hmm. and how they oh. know about other dimensions, but oh yeah, it's all gonna come crashing down on Doom's face, and I can't wait for it. Nice. I was excited to hear that Runaways. Isn't right? Yeah, totally. I'm doing Runaways number one. I've never read other Runaways titles, by the way, so I went into this with a clean slate. So it looks really cool. They're all at school, trying to learn what they need to learn for Doom. Because, of course, everyone cares about Doom because he's the god now. And uh, they're trying to get out of trouble from being in detention. So they go register for something they need to, <laughs> to graduate. I don't know. But it's really fun. It's a really cool look at the, the life of them hanging out at school and what they have to do to get away from the controlling robot that's monitoring them in detention. <laughs> and uh, it's got Bucky in there. We all like some Bucky. Uh, I thought it was really good. 
I, it's kind of setting it all up for issue number two, uh, but it spends a good amount of time telling you each character and what their powers are, and it's really cute the way to do it. So this is a really good jumping in spot if you ever wanted to get to know the Runaways. Molly was always my favorite. Like Molly, Molly, the, the the kid. She's a little girl that's like super strong and oh yeah, really, really cute and sweet. Describes her as invulnerable or near to an invulnerable. So she's the Superman of that group, I guess. All right, and then I read Martian Manhunter number one. I've read just about every single Martian Manhunter number one there is, but not a lot of the other ones. I know I really love this character. But please, someone call me and tell me how to say his name, because I'm sure it's not John Johns. <laughs> so is it John Johns? I don't know, but I really dig him. <laughs> so they call him John in the yeah they do in, yeah. the, in the, the animated series. But then his name is John Johns. Come on, <laughs> John John, John John, John 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 Johns. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I That's well a, or an apostrophe in there it makes you think or it should it be pause. Jean Jean. Jo <laughs> John G, John G, John, I don't know. <laughs> if you're from his home planet, please help us. Yes, Bell please. 281 298 1111. <laughs> <laughs> Just call us. That's right. Okay. Call so, on your cell phones. So it'll be free. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he finds himself being, he gets, comes back from the moon and finds himself stuck in the middle of a huge event that's happening. Gosh, I can't remember what it's called. It's something really cool. You need to know what it is. Emergence? No, no. It's, it's, it's some other name. Oh, epiphany. So Epiphany is happening. And he knows what it means. It kind of feels like he's the last of his race, but it feels like he's worried that a bunch of his race is coming to take over the world. So maybe you can tell me more. Man. Like the Time Lords. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's cool. You get to see him in a bunch of his different forms. One of them is so awesome it's big enough to like grab onto a jet plane. So, oh, it's so cool. Love this guy. But I don't know your name, so... We John. can't date. John, John. <laughs> no dating the John Johns. All right. Um, and a really big, thick book. This one's totally worth the money because it takes a long time to read at $5.99. It should. There's not a lot of ads in here to take up that space. It's a lot of good story. Well, that's our big one that we have this week, isn't it? Oh, yeah. It? This is the JLA, Justice League of America. Uh, starts out with Superman. He gets invited by some mysterious corporation or person. To go and uh, meet up somewhere, and he shows up. I don't know how, why these guys fall for this job, but they do. <laughs> you can't not go, right? Because they use a card that has lead symbol in it, so it looks like a regular card. But when he looks at it as a Clark Kent, it has a Superman symbol in it. So surely she go visit this person that's smart enough to do this and knows what his secret identity is. Sure, let's go. <laughs> that no, sounds on. completely sane and oh yeah, safe. But it, I mean it's well written. I in general don't really care for a lot of DC titles because the writing is the part that's usually so far in them, but this is really good. So it eventually gets the whole group together and they fight something. I'm not going to tell you what it is because <laughs> it kind of like messes some stuff up for the story. So um, it's good. So I told you all to set up for it and you'll enjoy the rest of the 60,000 pages in here. It's a great art. Don't we have like ten variants of that too? And we have so many variants of, cool. of all these things. Yeah, well, it's got the nice slick paper too. It does. It's yeah, like it paper. reads more like a magazine than yeah. a comic. Yeah. And um, which of the books do we have? Is it this one that we have like the triple, quadruple gold, gatefold cover? I think it was a Batman title. There's a Batman title that has like a one in twenty million cover. That we've got. It's got. It looks like the regular cover, but it like folds out and folds out and folds out and folds out to go across the room. It's really cool. <laughs> Um, that's up for auction this week, so don't miss any of the auctions. I think it might be that one. Do you think it's that one? It's I don't just know. just Batman on the cover, and I don't know. I know we ordered a lot a lot of the variants, and I want yes. them all. So all of them? That will be a difficult conversation this week. Hey, thank you for putting my it's show back birthday. on the Yeah, no problem. It's her birthday on Saturday. It's so my birthday on Saturday. Saturday. Yes. All right, we got a bunch of Marvel Select this week. We've got what you guys have all been waiting for. Don't wait too long. They will be disappearing. You've got the Arrow, Oliver Queen. This is the one without the stuff on his face. He's got his helmet off or his uh, hoodie off and everything. And then the Flash. This is the one with the Flash mask on. Um, everyone's been waiting a long time for these. And I know that as soon as people know that they're here, stuff. they will disappear. Yes. And we got the first of the really cool Firefly. Figures. This is the Jane Cobb. 
This is the Funko ones that are really awesome, so don't miss out on those because the ones that they put out like 10 years ago are already worth 60 bucks a piece, so get them while they're a normal price because they're a similar quality figure, so you can have a whole bunch of them. You can play with them on like your desk and like do the whole dinosaur thing. Yeah. If you have your Jurassic Park figures right now, you can reenact all kinds of crazy, yeah, this betrayal, gotta have it. <laughs> your sudden but inevitable betrayal. Absolutely. I am not gonna betray you. No, I didn't expect you to. <laughs> you it's not, I, <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking Jurassic World when I put this on this today. Of course. And I've seen it twice. It's really good. I like it too. Yeah, I've not seen it yet. Oh my goodness. Uh, I don't know if you can take the girls. It's well, we just we, we, we just watched Jurassic Park with the girls on Sunday, and it too. was it was life it was mind blowing. <laughs> Ellen insisted she saw a picture and she insisted they looked like plastic dinosaurs, but still she's doing this <laughs> the whole time. It was great. It was epic, and it reminded me why I love that movie so much. Oh yeah, I I liked it. This they're different movies, but I sort of felt like I was enjoying their first one again as a kid. Oh yeah. You know, like as a younger person. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it made me happy, the new one. And it made a buttload of money. <laughs> and Chris Pratt is yummy. <laughs> <laughs> and he's not playing Star-Lord in the movie, you, so he yeah. has acting chops, by the way. Mm -hmm. Good. Because yeah. you always worry about you're going to see Star-Lord in every film you see with him no. in it forever, but no, 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 no. He actually plays this new guy, so it's good. All right, so J and the two L's out. Watcha? <laughs> I hope that's not offensive in some country. 